morning, everybody. Fall is in the air, and apples are falling everywhere. And you know what they say, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. I don't know how many of you, when you think about fall, you think about oatmeal, cinnamon, apples, all that goodness. And yeah, today is Sunday, and I think fall is technically just a couple of days away. If I'm not mistaken, fall is on September 22nd. That is the first official day of fall. So we're feeling it. So while I'm still in tune with the whole apple season, when I'm in September and even into October, I think of apples. When we get later into October and November, of course, you know, our mindset switches a little bit more to pumpkin. This little town not too far away from us where they have an apple festival every year in Cory, Indiana. And why there's no apple orchards left there anymore. There used to be hundreds of them, according to my dad years ago. They still have the apple festival, which is a big draw around here every year. So that's coming up next weekend. Yeah, Cory Apple Festival. That will be coming up, yeah, like Chef said, next weekend will be the start of the Cory Apple Festival. And then uh, I, did, I believe the second Friday in October, kicks off the biggest festival around here, and that is the Park County Cover Bridge Festival. Yeah, and between that one's the Newport Auto Hill Climb Festival. Yeah. So if you guys have not ever heard of the Park County Cover Bridge Fest, please look it up. People come from all over the world, all over the country to this festival. Or if you're a motorhead like me, look up the Newport Auto Hill Climb, where they have all, hundreds and hundreds of old cars race up a hill. Yeah, and uh, the Cover Bridge Fest is a 10 day long festival. We've talked about it before with miles upon miles upon miles of yard sales, flea markets, food vendors, just everything that you would want yeah, in fall. Spread out over several little towns. Yeah, spread out over several little towns. There's a horse and buggy rides. It's just everything that you would want to see in fall all in one place. So anyway, with that said, I decided, okay, well, let's just bring out an old recipe again. And I know we made our caramel apple upside down bread um, a few days ago, but the apples were really, really good. And chef went back to Sam's, so I had him pick me up another big bag of these. If you can see them, nice, nice, nice. Five pound bag of gala apples. And that one still has a leaf on it. That's so super cute. Anyway, so I got into my oldie, oldie recipes. And I found one from my grandma. She and ain't joking. There was a moth and dust that flew out when she found that one. <laughs> there was not a moth and dust that flew out when I found the it recipe. Cute. But when you found that it's actually, recipe box, it flew out, I saw it. As, as my mom said it always came from my great-grandma. And the recipe is getting to the point where... I have to copy it down because it's just, it's very hard to read. As with all my recipes, they're faded. This is in my grandma's handwriting, so of course, this means a lot to me. Um, and the way they worded things back then, oleo, and you know, we just have to kind of, uh, what is it? Um, translate it into today's terms. So that's what we're gonna make today. We're gonna make my grandma's old fashioned oatmeal apple cake so step one milk cow no we're not gonna milk a cow that's what it says that's how old it is yeah well it's step about one that. milk cow step two churn butter <laughs> well back in the old days if you had to milk your own cow to get the milk and churn your own butter to make it well i don't know if i would have made it or not that's a lot of work for a cake but i have a few ingredients sitting out here it may look a little bit like it it's intimidating, but it's really, really not. It's very simple to make. There's a couple of things that we need to do first. And one thing is going to be, besides cut apples, um, I want to get, in, I just want about um, two cups of diced apples. So I'm going to be cutting those up, but I also need some oatmeal that's going to be um, softened up pretty much. So I'm going to try to get some of the stuff out of the way. Besides your basics, your all-purpose flour, your granulated sugar, some brown sugar, some instant oats, cinnamon, nutmeg, baking powder, baking soda, the apples, of course. 
some evaporated milk and some coconut and some butter um, because this has a topping on it and a lot of people have seen a cake similar to this I think they call it a lazy day cake um, it's very similar to what I'm making but yet not the same so I have a cup of just quick oats right here and I'm gonna pour it into my bowl here and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a quart, uh, one and a quarter cups of boiling water what I do is I just fill up a one and a quarter cup measuring cup stick it in the microwave for a couple of minutes and pour it over this once I pour the water over this I'm gonna mix it up and I'm gonna let it sit for about 20 minutes so let me get this sitting and I'll be right back okay I got my one and a quarter cups of hot water and I'm just going to pour it on my oatmeal and I'm going to give it a stir and I'm going to let this sit off to the side for about 20 minutes and that's all we're going to do with that so I'm going to put it over here out of the way the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get into my apples and I'm going to take probably about four apples ought to be enough three to four apples they're pretty good size I'm going to peel them and dice them up and also set them off to the side and then we'll get ready to make our cake mixture. I have my oven right now preheating to 350 degrees. So let me get my apples out and get started and I'll be back. Okay, I'm back now. So as you can see, I've got my two cups of diced apples here. It actually only took two apples. Those apples were really good in size, so I didn't need all four. So now we're going to get ready to make up our batter. So what we want is, first thing we want is one cup of packed brown sugar. You can use light brown sugar or dark brown sugar, but I prefer to use the light brown. We want one cup of packed. That's going to go in. And then we're going to want one cup of granulated sugar. So has everybody had a good weekend? I hope so. Me and the chef went to that awesome uh, ACDC tribute band concert last night um, called 21 Gun Salute ACDC tribute band and they are from Canada and they were just awesome. I can't, I can't tell you enough how much they just seemed like they were almost identical to ACDC. And any of you that are familiar with ACDC and Angus Young and his movements on stage when he's playing his electric guitar. The electric guitars that they had dressed like Angus didn't look quite like Angus, but he had Angus's movements down to a down to a science. He was just awesome. Okay. So now we have our brown sugar and our white sugar in here. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a stick of butter. And I've got it partially melted. I meant to put it in the microwave just to soften it. And it went a little far, but that's okay. It's not going to hurt a thing. So I'm just get all the butter out of here. And we're going to cream this together. But we went and saw the Queen concert the night before. The tribute band concert. And that band was called Simply Queen. And while the drummer was absolutely awesome, the rest of the band was just kind of meh. So being the Queen fans that we are, me and the chef was highly disappointed with that one. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this mixed together. All right, we got this mixed together and to this, we're gonna add two eggs. So I've got my two eggs here. Get those in here. A one. A two. -hoo. And again, we're going to blend this up together. Okay. Now I have my, just to show you, I've got my, another one of my temptations. My 9 by 13 pan here, this is what I'm going to use to bake it in. As always, I can't say enough about Temptations because it's just awesome bakeware. 
absolutely awesome okay so now we've got our butter in here we've got our brown sugar we've got our granulated sugar we've got our two eggs and now we're going to add in our oat mixture this is the mixture that we've had sitting and if you can see it's absorbed all the liquid just like it would if you were making oatmeal for breakfast so we're going to put this all in here smells really really good smells like fall and this will taste like fall your family will absolutely love it all right i'm gonna sit this off to the side with my other dishes and i'm gonna get this blended in pardon my arm i'm gonna try to reach over the opposite way we want to add one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. One and about a half of all-purpose flour. All right, now we've got that in here, we're gonna go ahead and add in our other goodies. We're gonna add in a half a teaspoon of salt. You don't need too much, just a half a teaspoon. If it comes out and doesn't go all over the place. All right, here's our half a teaspoon of salt. We're gonna add a half of a teaspoon of baking soda. Put my baking soda over here. All right. Half a teaspoon of my baking soda. Did you see that varmint? I did. It's summertime. Well, it's not summertime, but it's fall, getting close to fall. We have your doors open. I see a lot of videos where people are getting pestered by these little pesky flies, for sure. All right, and so we've got that in. Now we're gonna do one teaspoon of baking powder get our baking powder here and again I always say make sure your baking powder is is not old because if it's old it's not going to be as effective as you want it to be all right now we're also going to add in a teaspoon of cinnamon because yes we have to have cinnamon sometimes I add in a little bit extra cinnamon so, like now I'm going to add in about two teaspoons of cinnamon because that's, you know, sometimes you have to tweak the granny's old recipe. We like a little bit more cinnamon. And as soon as I can find it over here, I'm going to add in a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. So I always use the McCormick's ground nutmeg. To me, this smells very fall. So half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. All right. Now we're gonna get this all mixed up. Now the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add in our apples. We're gonna add in our two cups of apples. And we're just gonna mix this by hand. All right, let me get my pan ready and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got my nine by 13 Temptations pan here. And even though I've told you guys a million times, you don't technically have to spray it, but because I will be adding a topping onto this, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a light spray. Usually when we do our baking, we just use the Great Value Butter Flavored Spray. If we're doing like, um, you know, any type of sweets baking or anything like that or even our biscuits sometimes or breakfast casserole all right so now it's time to pour this into here okay let's get this spread out evenly in my pan here Now, if you can see this, I'm going to take this, I'm going to put it in my oven. It's preheated to 350 degrees, and I'm going to bake it 
Um, usually takes between 30 to 35 minutes, but you'll know it's done when you insert a toothpick into the center and it comes out clean. So as soon as this gets done, um, we're gonna go ahead and start on our topping. So I'm gonna get this in the oven and I'll be back. Okay, everybody, there's our cake out of the oven and in our oven, um, it took about 40 minutes this time. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get ready to make the topping. So let me see if I can get you guys situated here. All right, so in this pan right here, and it's, if you hear the kids making any noise, meaning fur babies, because it's starting to storm outside, we've got one approaching, I think, so we've got a little bit of um, thunder going on, so. If you hear me making noise, I'm getting ready to do our next video to tell yeah. you what we're having that before we eat some of this cake. Yeah, chef's getting ready to do another video. Um, I'll be doing another video this evening, but it won't go up tonight. The cake will go up tonight, and then I have another one for tomorrow, but part of what I'm making tonight is going to be for that one tomorrow, but we'll talk about that later. All right, anyway, so in my saucepan here, I've just got a medium saucepan, and I cut up one stick of butter into this, and um, we're going to have to be, we're going to be taking this over to the stove, so we want to try to do this pretty quick. We want to get this on top of our cake while it's still fairly warm. It doesn't have to be hot, but all right. I want to get one cup of brown sugar. So I'm going to, that looks good. One cup of packed brown sugar. All right. And to this, I'm going to add one cup of flaked coconut. Yes, flaked coconut. So I can do this without making a big old mess. Definitely going to be adding coconut to my list for Christmas. Because we do use coconut at Christmas sometimes. I may still have another bag in there. I'm not sure. But, okay. We've got our coconut in there. I want a teaspoon of vanilla extract and I'm just going to eyeball it. Got a teaspoon. That ought to do it. And then also we want some evaporated milk. We only need about a quarter of a cup of evaporated milk or as it is on my grandma's recipe, cream of mill nut <laughs> because that's all they used to have I guess in the can back then was mill nut. So anyway we only want a quarter of a cup of mill nut i'm going to dump that in there the rest of this i'm going to be using in a recipe or in my video that i'm going to be doing here in just a little bit so i'll get that taken care of and get that put in the refrigerator all right so now just going to mix this up a little bit and we're going to get ready to take this to the stove and what we're going to do is we're going to bring it to a boil we're going to let this boil for just about a minute and then we're going to take it off the stove and we're going to be putting it on our cake so i'll be back when we go to the stove okay now we're over at the stove i've got my stove on medium high and just want to make sure we stir this through the process get it all combined get it melted down and let it boil like I said once it starts boiling we want to let it boil for about one minute and then we're going to take it off and we're going to get it on that cake so as soon as it starts boiling I'll bring you back or, on second thought you know what well yeah maybe I'll bring you back okay guys I wanted to add also that I'm going to be switching the oven from bake over to broil because our next step we're going to be broiling the topping on the cake so and also, I needed to make a correction on that. It's not milnut, it's milnot. Some people pronounce it milnut, some people pronounce it milnot. So it's like potatoes, potatoes, however you want to pronounce it. That's what it is. So we're um, starting to get melted down here nice. Just waiting on it to come to a boil. And again, once it does, 
We're gonna boil it for one minute, and then we're gonna take it off the heat, and we're gonna to top our cake with it. So we'll be back. Okay, as you can see now, it's coming up to a boil, if you can see that. So I'm just gonna stir it around, and I'm gonna let it boil for about one minute. done I'll meet you back at the table and we'll work on the cake okay I'm back now and we've got our mixture that's all bubbled inside our pan here and all we're gonna do now if I can get a steady hand on this is we're just gonna pour this all over our cake make sure every bit of the cake gets a little loving somewhere Spread it out nice and evenly. Smells so caramely and good. Try to take the coconut and spread it out as even as you can. Try not to leave any spots there. Alright, I think that looks about good. So now we're going to take it over and we're going to put it in the oven under the broiler and we're going to broil it. Uh, we're just going to keep a real close eye on it. We want to let this get a nice golden brown on top and you'll know when it's done but you have to keep an eye on it because under the broiler it can burn if you don't watch it carefully. So I peek at it like every 30 seconds or so. It should only take less than five minutes. So, I'll meet you back when I got it done in the broiler and you can see the finished product. Okay, there you have it. This is out of the broiler now, if you can see how it's gotten the golden brown all around. You just want to keep an eye on it so that way it doesn't burn. I think this was in there for about seven minutes. So, it took a little bit longer than I thought it would. I thought it'd be about five minutes. but So, now we're just going to let it cool. Once it's all cool to where we can cut a piece and taste it, then we will. So we will be back. We'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, guys, we're back, and here we go. This is my great-grandma's old-fashioned, like, 100-year-old recipe for oatmeal apple cake. So let's have a taste, shall we? It's still a little warm. And get us a nice gooey piece with the topping. Try to do this left-handed. Woo! That nice caramel topping on there. Bite time. Mm-hmm. Mm -mm. Still a little warm. Mm, 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 mm. But it is so, so, so good. You can see the little crevices in there. There's raw apple. Well, it's cooked now, but there's apple in there. Gotta have another bite. Mm-hmm. That is good. You know what this tastes like, Chef? Tastes like fall. Tastes like fall, y'all. More apple in there, if you can see it. Okay. Peeking right there. <laughs> yeah, Chef's been cutting peppers and onions so he can do his uh, video that he's doing. Hence the reason why I'm trying to get out of the way and I cut the cake a little early. Sorry, guys, I had to take another bite. <laughs> All right, with that said, this is the video for now, and we'll be back with another one later on. 
We've got a couple of them, different ones coming up, some sweet and some savory. So we're going to go for now, and we will see you guys in the next video. See you guys later. Bye, guys. Bye.